Hey friends, it's Kathy calling, or I'm not calling, I'm actually here. I'm going to actually bring on um, Stacy, and let's see, there she is. I've just invited her, and uh, let's uh, shortly. Anyways, how are you all? This all out, as always, there we go. Um, okay, I'm going to bring you on, Stace. I see you. All right. Okay, so Stacey is coming on. Uh, and we're going to get started talking about... Oh, here we are. She's adding. There we go. Hey, Stace. Hi. How's hey. it going? Oh. <laughs> How are we going to do this? There we go. <laughs> Hi. Good. Hey. You're looking so active. Well, I'm training, right? I I, I coach during the day. Oh, okay. I have virtual clients, so always got to be active. And I work out myself sometimes too, right? So. <laughs> um, okay, wait. Before we officially get started, do you have your thing that you posted about yesterday beside you in the box? <laughs> I, yeah, I am. Do you have it close by? No, it's not. It's not up here because okay. I have to re-glue the the little box, the blister packet that came around it. The um the plastic came off, so I got to fix it. Oh my gosh! Um, for for, for uh, any of you who do not know what I'm talking about, go check out uh, Stacy's. Um, it was on your Facebook uh, page, right? Yeah. I'm okay. uh, sorry, my. I think it was a Facebook and Instagram. Yeah, yeah. it's pretty awesome. This is like a once in a lifetime. Not everyone gets a doll made out of made in their impression so that's pretty awesome yeah it's a little it's a caitlin ryan action figure that uh, a client of mine he made it he took another action figure and he somehow customized it <laughs> to wear the exact same outfit that caitlin wore in a specific episode and he he put the, the little thing on the back it was awesome that anyway. is really cool okay i know we only have 10 minutes <laughs> excuse me um so let's chat uh hey joe nice to see you and hey anna how are you both doing today we thought we'd talk a little bit about um weight gain during the menopausal transition or midlife um and there is some discussion and uh debate as to whether this is actually a cause of weight gain if it's our hormones or not so anyways we'll just chit chat about it um stace since you work in you know your coaching for strength training and i know this is a really important part of this transition for many of us can you tell us a little bit about that from your perspective yes okay so and i want to i want to specify i think specifically we're targeting um belly fat gain okay not just i mean weight gain in general sure that's it's going to happen as we get older um perimenopause menopause postmenopause can exasperate it, can, can make it harder to keep the weight off, not necessarily for everybody. The reason being is, again, because of the hormone imbalances that happen as we go through these, these periods. Um, so estrogen, predominantly, it, it goes up and down during perimenopause. It can fluctuate, and that can throw kind of everything out of balance. Now, if estrogen's really low, there is a tendency for uh, fat storage to occur. And that is our body's way of protecting our bones, uh, you know, for protecting bone density, because we start losing that as we get older. So that's a natural thing. However, too, if estrogen gets really high, and this can happen, I'm gonna try and explain this so everybody understands because it mm -hmm. gets confusing. It does. So yeah. if our let's start with cortisol. Cortisol is our stress hormone that we need for energy. Now, if that starts and it and it does get high for a lot of us, and if it gets too high, what can happen is it can block progesterone. Now, estrogen and progesterone need to be in balance. And if our progesterone is blocked by cortisol, then our estrogen, even if it was lower, is now higher than the progesterone. It's called estrogen dominance. 
And when that happens, cortisol can team up with insulin, which regulates our blood sugar, and it can add belly fat. <laughs> so that was a long way of explaining what can happen. So again, we've got low estrogen, high estrogen, high cortisol. And the only reason this is a concern, it's first of all, I have clients that start feeling like they have to start working out more they have to start counting their calories because they don't understand why suddenly they're not able to gain lean muscle and they're not they're they're getting this this extra layer of fat around their belly and again it comes down to hormone imbalance so the answer is not to start working out more necessarily because if anything our bodies are also in need of recovery more we can't overdo it and we don't want to start obsessing about calories and stuff like that. We do want to, you know, watch our sugar and alcohol intake, our diet in general. But we really need to be easy on ourselves and not start beating ourselves up about um, these changes that are happening. And we need to understand it, too. I just want to add this real quick, Kathy. I know I'm rambling on here. Oh, but yeah. The only real reason we're focusing on the belly fat is number one, because people get discouraged and frustrated with themselves. Number two, belly fat can be dangerous. We're talking about more of an apple shape than a pear shape. So when you're getting extra fat around your belly, it tends to be a more dangerous type of fat. It's called visceral fat. And that is the fat that you can be skinny and have visceral fat. You know that expression skinny fat yeah the visceral fat is the fat that is in our abdomen it's deep within our abdomen it's not the subcutaneous fat that you can pinch it's deep within our abdomen and it starts suffocating our organs and making them work harder so that is the real issue it can lead to diabetes too it can lead to all type it can lead to all kinds of health issues but this is the main concern Right. Okay. I'm going to let you talk. Sorry. No, that was very <laughs> helpful. And I think also there's like, I don't think all of this happens in a vacuum. I feel like, um, you know, as we start to move through our midlife, maybe some of us aren't as active as we once were. And I don't necessarily mean hitting the gym and doing all the stuff, stuff, but often we're sitting at a chair for long periods of time. So we're more sedentary. Um, and so that's going to, of course, um, impact how, how our body composition looks and, you know, things just like you said, we go from pear shape to apple shape. There's a body composition change. And yes, this visceral fat is something that we might want to be, um, that we should be a bit more concerned about. But I think going back to, because I, I've, we've talked about this before, um, you know, I think we've all had such toxic messaging around weight for our whole life. Um, and perhaps it's going back to feeling into what it is that we really feel we need to, how we need to be nourished. And so when we're like craving sugar, why are we craving sugar? I think those kinds of questions are actually really insightful because often people crave sugar when we're really stressed or we're feeling we need some comfort and understanding that can be the first part in kind of changing around our habits uh, sure. around food and our relationship around food. Um, and, um, and also stress, like you said, stress is really a factor because when our body is really stressed, it's sending out cortisol and cortisol is sending a message to the brain to, to, to store fuel. And so we may be, you know, holding on to extra pounds because we're in a chronic state of stress. Uh, and then having good sleep. So, you know, we, every, every time we talk, it comes back to stress. And stress just exacerbates every single physiological symptom in our body. Um, and then as far as, you know, like the, the, the extra, you know, I've, I've noticed I've gained probably about 10 to 15 pounds in the last 10 years. And I'm really trying to understand, because there's so much mixed messaging around weight gain, and is it just a healthy, normal weight gain, which is nothing to stress about because it's my body's way of protecting itself? Or is it a narrative that I have in my brain about what I think the ideal body is supposed to look like? And I think those messagings are often quite conflicting. And then we don't actually end up 
trusting our body because we're not sure what our body's supposed to look and feel like. So there's so many factors involved with this um, that I think it's worth, and we've already touched upon it, I think it's worth um, reiterating that this weight gain isn't just doesn't happen in a vacuum. I think it's multifactorial. And then also may, it's, it's not always a bad thing because really, really thin people going through the transition often have uh, worse symptoms because they have no, um, because they have a, 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 a further depletion of their estrogen. So there's no estrogen stores. So there's different things. Anyways, anything to add I to that? Yeah, no, I, it, you're, you're dead on, Kathy. I think the real, um, the real question that needs to be asked is how do you feel? Not, it doesn't need, like, our bodies are going to change, and that's just part of life. And it doesn't have to be a bad thing. And there are ways of coping. But overall, like you said, like weight gain is just part of probably some other things that are going on. If there's a hormone imbalance, one hormone affects so many other hormones. So again, yeah. like it all comes down to doing things you enjoy to bring down your stress, making time for yourself, getting a good night's sleep, right? And again, it, it also comes out to working out ideally earlier in the day when your cortisol is at its highest, so when you have your most energy. So it's not gonna interfere with your sleep if you're having issues. Um, things like that, there are things we can do. So I don't want, it's not all doom and gloom. <laughs> oh yeah, no, for sure. I think for many of us, this is like a really, I mentioned this before, I feel like this phase of my life is a super exciting and super empowering <clears throat> time as we step into what we, we say in East Asian medicine is our second spring. And this is a, a whole chance to reevaluate and rediscover who we are and what we want to feel like in our life in the second part of our life, which I think is really uh, an amazing and empowering and um, exciting time. Um, I was going to mention something and now I have, oh, and just finding more pleasure, like pleasure in life. I, I think we need to put an emphasis on how we feel over how we look. I mean, how we're feeling, I think is really important, just like you said, so. No, exactly. Exactly. And be just, being healthy is not about how you look, right? It is about how our body is functioning. Yeah. And if a body's working harder than it needs to, that's going to put stress on everything else. So we just, we want to make sure we're taking care of ourselves. Yeah. What time is it? Are we done the tea time? <laughs> yeah, I was just moving my papers to make sure we're on time this time. It's 1.38. I think we have two minutes. Okay. <laughs> I see a couple of you. Brian says he's got, he has a strong cup of coffee in the morning. That's his answer. Um, <laughs> Uh, anyone else have any questions? Any thoughts about what we should talk about next week? Steve, I can't do you have any comments. thoughts about what you'd like to talk about next week? Oh, me? Uh, <laughs> me? Uh, oh, there's so many things, Kathy. So many things. <laughs> like even this, there's so much to unpack. And, oh like, my gosh. This, this could be like, you know, um, uh, an hour, a longer time to unpack because there is just so much and I'm, I'm being very mindful and I know we both are about talking about this subject because I think it's a very triggering subject for a lot of people for good reason. And so, um, you know, I'm just, uh, we're just being, we're, anyway, we're trying to be, uh, not trying to be, cause it's a value of mine and I know it's a value of yours. Um, uh, Delin says heart health. Heart health? Heart health, we could chat sure. about a little bit. Uh, anything in particular? That would be good. Yeah, there is so much to talk about. I would like to talk about at some point um, just the power of perimenopause because, you know, it's it's not all, I, I really want to avoid the medicalization of it and making it mm. seem like it's um, uh, it's a whole bunch of syndromes that are meant to be um, medicalized. And at some point, sure. you know, some people it needs to be for their quality of life, but I think our whole mindset around it needs to change and our whole, our whole narrative around it needs to change. Um, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay. Let's do that. Let's do like a, a positive, uh, the power of peri, the power yeah. of perimenopause. Actually, I'm doing a workshop on the power of perimenopause, uh, like a, a live workshop, finally, actually with like living people in the same state. <laughs> really great. I saw that. I did see that you, you had posted that. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
Yes. Uh, sorry, I'm just also reading the comments. <laughs> Um, I can put up, you know what I'll do is as an addendum, because 10 minutes is nearly not enough time to talk about something that's so big and so individual. Like not all, all, all women go through this or all people with ovaries go through this, but we don't all go through it in the same way and, and for the same reason. So I, I've noticed some of the comments here. I will post something that I think is helpful about the weight gain on my, um, on my page. And Stace, if you come up with anything, because resistance training is really important as well. So maybe something you can post and I can link to it. And I have, I have um, the UHN panel that I did just recently. I touch on this stuff. There are so many, and, and the, the other two ladies were really uh, informative as well. So I can give you the link to that because I think there's just a lot of, there was a lot of great information put up on there. Okay. Um, so I, I love people to see that. Okay, awesome. <laughs> That'll be great. Okay, Adam, nice to see you, or nice to see your, uh, your name, long time. Anyways, thanks. <laughs> Cheers, everyone. Have a great day. Where's your tea, Stace? Cheers, here, okay. here. Ready? Okay, yeah. Wait, we gotta, we gotta clink it. Beep. Oop. Smash. <laughs> All right, my dear. I'll talk to you next week. Thanks, everyone, for joining. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye. <laughs>